Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, the vicar asked me to give a talk on um, how we as Christians can navigate the problems we have today in Nigeria. One of the problems, the cost of living crisis. When we have a situation where our take-home pay no longer takes us home. Before we get home, the money has finished. So what can we do about it? Um, I have 30 minutes, so I'll try to keep within the 30 minutes. Um, before I recommend what are the things I believe we can do, I need to discuss or try to explain why we have gotten to where we are today. Because it's only when we know how we've gotten to where we are that we can appreciate and understand what we need to do to navigate ourselves out of this very tough situation that we find ourselves. Now, you know, one of the things I like to say is that in, um, so this is basically ed anything to do with the economy, our pocket and everything is a topic of economics. And we don't all have to go to university to study economics, to know some of the basic principles of economics. Um, but a lot of the, the situation we find ourselves are issues that arose a couple of years ago. And this thing takes a long time before we begin to feel, you know, the effect of it. Um, if the media can project the, the slides, yes. I hope we can see it. Okay. So, the topic for my presentation is that why has the price of rice gone up to 75000 I think we all eat rice here. Is anybody here who doesn't eat rice? I think we all eat rice. So, I picked... I picked a, a food item that I know that we all eat. Well, the last time I checked, I was sold at 75000 I don't know whether it's even gone up since the last time I checked, but I, I, I know it's around 75000 That's... Uh, it's gone up again. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, last year, around November, December last year, you know, when my company was buying rice um, for staff, I know we paid about just under 50000 So between then and now, it's gone up by more than 50%. So the next question I will ask for anybody that is salaried here is that has your salary gone up by 50% between December and now? I can hear you no. <laughs> so obviously we have a bit of a problem, don't we? Because cost is galloping and... Um, uh, Rice is going on. We go to the next slide. So, media, just leave it um, with the slides. Uh -huh. The next slide. So, it's not just price. It's not just rice that has gone up in price. You can see all all manners of um, of um, of items have gone up in price. Uh, so, this is you know the guardian um, beans, yam, gari, pepper, uh, bread. Um, a, tubula, a tube of yam is now 7,000. You see, I even know the price of all these things. <laughs> that was because my wife told me yesterday. <laughs> so even the price of yam has gone up. Uh, how much was yam last year? November, December last year? Uh, 5,000. So it's more than doubled. Uh, has your salary more than doubled? Ha. Ah. Employers that are here, I hope you're hearing. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So, why, why, so uh, when we talk about, you know, this cost of living crisis, what we're basically saying is that our income is not going up, but our expenses is going up. So, we don't actually mind if our income is going up at the same rate as if the expenses are going up. So, we can see there are two issues here. Our income is not going up. 
but our expenses is going up. So let's look at those two things separately. Let's look at our income first. So is our income going up? Well, I can clearly see from all the uh, from what I'm hearing is that it hasn't gone up. But you know, we can actually use statistics. And um, when the vicar talked about the truth, as it's in, mentioned in the Bible, we can have figures to back anything that we're saying up. So now, obviously, I don't know the income of everybody in Nigeria, but we can. But there are figures. They call them the GDP. That measures all the income of everybody in the country. So we can know whether it's going up or not going up. That represents our income level, even though we don't need to be asking everybody individually. So let's look at the, the GDP and see what is happening. Next slide. So this graph shows our, all our income, all the income um, or output, the value of it over a period of um, over 20 years, from 2000, from year 2000. This is a graph of it. It's measured in dollar because dollar is like a very stable currency rather than Naira. And you can see that it peaked at 2014. Then from 2014, it's been going down. It's very interesting. It peaked. Normally, it's supposed to be going up and up and up and up. So to, what that means in simple English is that we earn less now than in 2014. 2014 ag on aggregate, 2014 was the time when we earned the most amount of money in dollar terms, in fixed money, rather than Naira, because Naira is not very stable. If you go to the next slide, this measures GDP per person individually now. It's the same, it tells the same story. 2014 was when it peaked. Individually, we all earn less now than 2014. 2014 was the peak. So we actually earning less. In Naira terms, you may earn a little bit more, but in a fixed currency like dollar, we actually earn less. So that's the problem, isn't it? And if you go to the next slide, you see, and that's what makes us to be poor. So our level of poverty is very, very, very high. Um, there are different statistics or different ways of measuring um, poverty. And um, we have here even our own Nigerian Bureau of Statistics uh, that measures uh, poverty by different measures. Then we have World Bank that also measures poverty. And you can see all of them are showing very clearly that the number of very poor people and poor people keeps increasing over a period of uh, time. So next slide. So why is it that our income our output, our GDP, why is it falling? You know, I said 2014 was the peak and it's been going down. Well, basically, there are different ways in which we can, the factors that affect our level of income. So our level of income is the same as our level of output because it's whatever we sell that is our income. So when I say um, GDP, I may be using output, income, interchangeably, but they mean the same, they mean the same thing. So there are four factors that affect how much as, an, as a country, you know, we can increase our, our income. So four factors, land, labor, capital, technology. What this means is that the more land we have, the more we're supposed to have the opportunity, you know, to grow our output and our income. The more labor we have, the more capital, the more technology, that's supposed to be used to increase our level of income. Um, land. Do we have land? Oh, we have plenty of land. So that should not be a problem because Nigeria is blessed with land. If you travel from Lagos all the way to Abuja, all the way to Sokoto, you see land everywhere, mostly uncultivated. But some countries have problems with land, but we don't have. We're blessed with plenty of land. Labor. Do we have labor? Oh, we have plenty. We have over 200 million people. Plenty of labor. That shouldn't be a problem. Capital. Financial capital, yeah, maybe a little bit, but it's on the fourth one that we have a serious problem, technology. We have very, very, very little technology um, in this country, and that's what is drive, dragging down our output. Now, when we talk about technology, we have what they call first, first generation, second, sorry, first uh, revolution, second, third, fourth. When we're still in the third, 
the other countries that are more productive than us, they're already on the fifth uh, generation. So they talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, virtual reality. We are still in the third. The third is trying to even get our power to run, for us to run our factories. You know, we don't have constant power. That's third. And these other people that are more productive than us, they're already on the fifth generation. So that's a major problem, a major, major problem why our output, our income is going down because the use of technology is still very, very, very low, very, very low in this part of the, of the world. So we as Christians, the questions we should be asking ourselves is what role can I play in getting um, ourselves into having more technology to be used in this country we call Nigeria. The next slide also shows part of the problem. You remember I said that um, 2014 was when we had the highest amount of, um, of output. Then the next slide was per person. So this graph shows our GDP per person to show you that things are even getting worse. No, the, the one before. So this, the, the slide before. This slide compares our population to that of two other countries, the UK and, um, and France. And it shows that in 1970, 1970, we all had the same population. We all had about 60, no, about 50 million people in 1970. UK, France, and, um, and uh, France. But if you now go to 2020, you see that our own population has gone up to around 210. It's now 220 there about. And these other countries, their population is slightly below 70. So from 50 to just slightly below 70. So you can see our own population has grown three times that of theirs. Whereas because they use technology, they've been able to grow their own output. So we are growing our population, but we are reducing what is coming out. So basically, we don't have enough food to take care of the increasing population that we have. So we should be growing at three times more than all these other advanced countries if we want to stay the same. So that's another major problem. So that's why every time you go to the market um, and the prices are going up, it's really because there's a lot of mouth to feed and the output is not growing. So if you take food, for example, you know there's insecurity. Not many people want to go to the farm because if they go to the farm, they're afraid of the herdsmen and stuff like that. So it's a major problem for us if we want to um, have all the yam and want to whatever. We have to increase our level of output. But we need to be using technology for that. You know, we have to be using technology for that as well. So that's also part of our problem. The next slide just tells the same story, so I'll skip that one because I can see I'm running out of time already. So you can see output we're not producing enough our pop because we're not using technology. Our population is increasing at a very high rate. Um, so the little food that we're producing, the little things we're producing, they're just not enough. Uh, um, there's just not enough food to, carry, to take care of everybody. So, having said that, let's now go to the other one. You know, I said uh, our pocket or our standard of living is determined by both what we get, our income, and also our expenses, the rate at which our expenses is going up. So, that's the next thing I want to talk about. Next slide, and then the next one. I'll go to the next one. So, basically, the price is increasing. Price is increasing all the time depends on three major factors. So I'll just briefly touch on them. One is things that happen outside the country that has nothing to do with us. We call them global economic shocks. Uh, they happen and then it doesn't, you know, like for example, when oil price goes up, most of the time it has nothing to do with us, but it has an effect on us because now, you know, we kind of like reduce, well, there's no subsidy on, on diesel anyway. So anytime oil price goes up, diesel price also goes up and that affects transportation of food from one place to the other so that affects us the other one 
is what we call fiscal, and then the other one monetary. I'll touch on them very briefly before I now go to what I feel we as Christians can do to try to manage ourselves. Let me go to first talk about global economic shocks, not in a lot of detail. But global economic shocks are just th next slide <clears throat> are just things that happen um, outside that doesn't affect us. So there's not much we can do about them. The the last two which happened in this decade are the COVID crisis, uh, the COVID uh, epidemic. You know when COVID happened, um, a lot of we couldn't go out, we couldn't far. Then over there, um, things supply chain had major issues um, for the people that are manufacturing. They couldn't get spare parts for the machines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so that affected all of us. Um, so prices of everything just went through the, through the roof. Then recently, we had um, a, uh, Russia decided to attack um, Ukraine. And that created a series of events that caused global inflation crisis because, you know, Ukraine is the biggest producer of wheat and um, they were not able to export wheat, and then energy as well, because Russia is a major producer of gas and energy, and the Western world cut them off. Energy prices went through the roof in Europe. Prices of everything went through the roof in Europe, and that also affected, because we import a lot of things. So all the things we imported during that period, the prices went you know, through, the, through the roof as well. So these are things that had nothing to do with us, but they affected part of the, that's part of the reason why cost of things are also high. But unfortunately, we, there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing I will say is that if you look at this graph, it shows all the economic shocks that happened over the past six decades. And on average, we'd never have more than two economic shocks in a decade. So we pray that this decade, we're done with economic shocks, that we will not have any other economic shock um, in the world. And that's why we need to be prayerful as Christians to ensure that the Israel-Hamas war does not lead to another economic shock in the world. So it's a big prayer point that we don't have that, because that's the only thing that may happen, this um, Israel-Hamas war, that it doesn't lead to an economic shock. We pray that that doesn't happen. Now, the next one is fiscal. So fiscal is basically what government does. You know, what does government do? They tax us. They collect revenue and then they spend. They collect revenue, they collect money from us and then they spend. But the problem is when they now spend significantly more than what they earn. And that has been happening a lot. They've been spending far, far, far more than what they earn to the point where they project about 10 trillion. In deficit. So it's like you, you earn money, but the money you're earning is not enough. So you go and borrow. It's okay one day because you hope that maybe the year you get a bonanza, you get a bonus. And then, but if it keeps happening on a consistent basis, how does the government then fund this SS? You know, for as an individual, what do you do? You go and borrow from somebody, maybe from the bank or from your relative. But what does the bank, what does the government do? Sometimes they do something very naughty. We call it ways and means. What does it mean? They'll be printing money. Printing money. You know, the government is government. They have the power to, to print money. They'll be printing money. And the central bank governor, the new central bank governor, or relatively new central bank governor, he actually said uh, at a forum last week, I'll show you this slide later on, later, later on that said that Part of the inflation we have, the cost, the prices, is because of the money, excessive money that was being printed just to fund government expenditure. So anytime I read in the newspaper that they are awarding another big contract, my mind is like, ah, well, where are they going to get this money? If they're going to start printing money again, it is going to lead to more price increases. I'll explain how that happens later on. Um, but the consequence of the government overspending and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and printing and printing is what we call price increases. Price increases. I will explain how it happens later on. But that if so, we, in our country, we should be praying for our politician to reduce this amount of money they keep 
um, borrowing and printing. The next slide shows you this inflation, this cost of the increases as measured. You can see that even when we go back, when we go back to 1996, the last, the last record of inflation is 33.95%. But even if you go back, you will see that it's always been around, if you look at the average of what I have here, it's almost 20%. Inflation just means erosion in the value of the money in our pocket. So which means that on average, the money in our pocket is being eroded every year by between 15 and 20%. So if you have 100,000 Naira and you just leave it in the bank, by the time you go there next year, that money, 20% of it has gone away. It has gone away. In fact, money is not cash. It is not something to be... You shouldn't keep your wealth in cash because it just it gets eroded by, by this thing called, we call inflation. These are figures to show that every year, just note that every year, your le level of wealth, if it is in cash, is going down. So that's why prices keep going up year in, year out. What are the causes of this inflation? Um, you one of the major causes of inflation is the devaluation of our currency. Our currency also keeps devaluing. So if you go to the next slide, you see that if you plot a graph between the devaluation of the devaluation of Naira and inflation, you see that they are almost the same. Next slide. On the next slide. Next slide. So anytime you hear Naira devaluing, just know that Inflation is coming up. Very sad. Um, you know, last at the beginning of this year, exchange rate was 1,200. As at yesterday, no, uh, well, on Friday, it had gone up to 1,600 and 1,560. I think that's like about 30% or there about 35%. Uh, what? What percentage? About 30%. So you can see inflation is also what? 33.95. So you can see that both of them, they're like twin sisters. So anytime you see, you hear dev devaluation, then it's also inflation. Now, the, so every time there's the de uh, devaluation of the currency, we also have the de uh, inflation in the currency because a lot of things we import them we import them so once we imp once there's importation then one prices of those things go up then look at all of us maybe the clothes we're wearing for example they're all imported the food may be produced locally but the vehicle that will bring the food from the north to the south is running it well the car the, the lorry is imported that's number one the spare part is imported and then the diesel, the diesel is all, uh, well, we're not producing locally, but, but Dangote is charging the international price of diesel. So it doesn't really matter, you know, if the dollar exchange rate goes, goes up, the price of diesel, it would also go up, even though we're here. Yeah, the only advantage of Dangote refining is that we're creating jobs locally. But in terms of the price, the price is still affected by the inflation, the, by the devaluation the of, uh, of Naira. Next slide. So I will try not to be too technical here. Uh, my wife listened to this presentation when, and he said it's getting a bit too technical. So I'll try not to make it too technical. Uh, so, but inflation is also primarily driven by how much money that we have in circulation. So just think about it. If we have one trillion naira in circulation, um, that one trillion and the value of the goods we have we produce only one item, widget. We call it widget. And there's only one trillion of the widgets that we produce. They have the capacity to produce only one trillion widgets. So which means the price of each widget will be one naira because we have one, <coughs> one trillion naira. Now let's assume that suddenly um, we print one trillion extra naira. So we now have two trillion money. But we only still produce one trillion widget. So what happens to the price of each widget? 
It doubles. Simple. It doubles. So that's what is happening. You know, I told you that Central Bank was printing, or the, on behalf of the Federal Government of Nigeria, was printing more Naira without producing more goods. So very simple. What happened? Prices go up. That's why you see the price going up. Because now, unfortunately, for some of us, we're not the beneficiary. This extra money that is being printed, unfortunately, it goes to the hand of some people first. It doesn't come to your own hand. That's why you're feeling it. So for the people who are the first beneficiary of the newly printed, minted money, when they go out to buy, because they have extra money, so it's not a problem for them. But later on, to some of us who are not beneficiary of this newly minted money, by the time we now go to the market, those people that have that are beneficiary, they've already bought all the all the all the goods. So the prices then go up. Because the person who is selling, those market women or men, or whether the shops that are selling, what usually happens is that they now suddenly two people are now coming to buy goods. Uh, no, I can increase price. So they increase the price. And then this extra money that are being printed also chase dollars. So the number of amount of dollar we have based on what we export is finite. So when they print more Naira, what then happens? These people now suddenly go and buy dollars with the newly printed money. And then that's why the exchange rate also goes up. So... So this gentleman is, a, is an economist, a Nobel Prize winner. He said, um, inflation is always a monetary phenomenon, which means it, when you get to the root cause of inflation, it's usually when governments are printing more money. And by the way, he may be right, because even in the Western country, you may have heard that America also had high inflation. You may have heard that the UK also had very high inflation. In fact, inflation in the U.S. went as, and the U.K. went as high as 8, 9 percent. They also discovered, they were also printing money um, somehow. They were also all, they, they, are, they were not printing money per se. Yeah, they were printing money. Quantitative easing is printing money. So they were actually printing money. So they've now discovered that, no, 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 this printing of money is not a good idea. So what they've done, now doing in those countries is they're canceling all the money they printed. They're canceling it. They're canceling it. They call it quantitative easing. They're not doing the reverse of quantitative easing. For those of you that understand economics, so they're not canceling it. And in the UK, inflation has now gone down from the 8 9%. It has come down to 2%. And in the US, after canceling all the money that they printed, inflation has come down. Last week, it went down to 3%. And they want to continue canceling that all the money they created, they were, they're going to continue canceling. Next slide. I hope it's not too technical. Okay, next slide. Uh, this just shows, just to buttress the point I'm making, this measures all this money we are creating. It, it's, they, we call it M3. Uh, the economists call it M3. It's a measure of all the money that are being created. And you can see what is happening to, to it. it. In fact, in 2023, the, money, the total money supply went up by, M3 went up by 51%. 51%. The extra money chasing the same goods we're producing. We're not producing more. Went up by 51%. Won't we have inflation? I think it's pretty obvious we'll end up with inflation. Whereas GDP only grew by 3.46%. So, uh, next slide. Next slide. My time is almost up. Um, and I want to get to the real cocoa which is uh, what we can do about all these. Next slide. Uh, next slide. I've already touched on why we have increased money supply. This next slide was taken on um, Friday. Uh, and this is even the central bank governor acknowledging, acknowledging that the inflation we have was based on the intervention fund that the previous CBN governor did. It was just basically dishing out money. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure whether the people here are beneficiary of that money, but it is the people who are the beneficiary of that money that may not have been so much affected because they will have used the money to quickly go and buy dollar when dollar was cheap. Uh -huh. So they will be smiling. 
But if you were not a beneficiary of the intervention fund, I'm very sorry for you. You are a victim of the inflation that arose as a result of that. So this is Central Bank itself, not me, saying that um, 20, it says, uh, I just want to read it. It says um, 10 trillion, 10 trillion intervention funds and 27 trillions ways and means. Ways and means means printing money. This is Central Bank, not me. Saying, he said, this is the responsible for the high inflation rate we have in Nigeria. Central Bank governor. So it's not me saying it. You can see where the problem is. So next slide. So what, what, what's, what does Central Bank do? Central Banks have what we call tools to try to manage this problem that was created by its predecessor and predecessors. Um, which is why we have, I'm not going to go into the detail, but that's why we have very high um, interest rates. Part of why we have high, well, the major reason is to try to reverse this problem that he inherited. He has to reverse it. So unfortunately, for those, anybody borrowing money, interest rates will remain high for a very long time, for quite a long time, because he has to reverse it. And again, if you borrow from what has happened in the U.S., They've witnessed now high interest rate. They relatively for them is relatively high. Interest rate used to be one percent or thereabout. For them, they are five point two five in the UK and the US. You know, that's very high for them. <laughs> it's not high for us, but relatively is very high for them, um, and it has remained high. So the next slide also shows that it just kind of compares inflation with um, with um, the central bank rate, and you can it shows you that even they may even increase interest rates even further. So please bear that in mind. Um, now, let me now go to what I think will go. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Um, what do I think is likely to happen going forward? I think going forward, no, you've gone, you've gone before this one. Yes, this one. So the next, so basically, you know, our budget deficit continues to be high. I anticipate that central bank will continue to have what we call a very restrictive money, monetary um, um, policy to try to rein in on all the extra money that has been created. It has to be destroyed. All that extra money has to be destroyed. And the only way to destroy it is by having high interest rates. There's a mechanism for it, but I don't want to bore you with the mechanism. But high interest rate has a way of destroying money that has been created in the past. It's not good for us. It means the economy, unfortunately, will not grow. But if we have to choose, central bank has a mandate. And the first, ma they have two mandates. One, stable, uh, low, in low inflation. Two, grow the economy. Right now, central bank is saying, I would rather prefer to reduce inflation before growing the economy. You need low interest rate to grow the economy, but Central Bank is saying, we'll do that one later. First, the first thing we're going to do now is what? Reduce inflation. Because it's killing us. We can't continue having price of yam and rice going up all the time when our income. After a while, we won't even be able to eat. We will die. So that's the issue. Why that's the reason why Central Bank has said that. Um, I think what they should do, this is my advice in the medium term, is to increase taxes as well too, instead of these ways and means. When I say increase taxes, I don't mean that those of us that are paying tax, that we should be burdened with more tax. No, there are lots of people that are not paying taxes, especially the very wealthy people. Uh, they have, wealthy people have ways, they're the one controlling the whole system. So they have a way of not paying taxes. Uh, for example, I'll give an example, just one example. You know, poorer people, we pay taxes on our income because the bulk of our uh, whatever is from income. But uh, richer people don't have much income. They have what we call capital gains. And the tax on capital gains is between 0 and 20%. Most of the time it's 0%. And they don't pay tax on that. Legitimately or not trying to evade. Legitimately. So these are some of the ways in which you know, countries, if you really want to increase taxes, you can easily increase taxes. And then, of course, we all know that a lot of even the money spent, we all know that, that that money doesn't get to where it's supposed to 
get to. Every day we read in the newspaper about money they siphon for this place. We all know that. Uh, there was even, in fact, I found it interesting last week that the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, our own government statistics, <laughs> in the newspaper, they actually, they actually said they quantified the amount of money um, corruption. It's incredible that even a government uh, institution, agency, will quantify it. It was a staggering amount of money. Um, so we have even acknowledged, even the government acknowledges that a lot of the government expenditure, they are all stolen as well. So they, that, I have to put a stop to that. And then, of course, improve our supply constraints. Because we don't have security. If we don't have security, we can't go and produce. Even those of us that want to go to the farm to produce, we can't go to the farm to produce. Anybody else, can you imagine somebody setting up a factory in the north? I mean, with all the Boko Haram and whatever. They can't even do that. So how can we have production unless there's security in the land? So these are the things government can do. Uh, whether they will do it is another thing. My second to the last slide now, most important. What does it mean for we Christian? How do we survive? How do we nav navigate? How do we make sure that there's enough money in our pocket? How do we make sure that those of us that are planning for our retirement, we still have money, we will have money. You know, one of the problem is for those people that are retiring or have retired or working towards retirement, when the money that you have is can no longer, you can't survive and you can't work any longer because you're already retired. Um, you know, all the things you used to do before you can't do any longer. And your pension is not even, is no longer enough any longer. You know, it's a major problem for all of us. So whilst we're in our youth, the best way to, so we have to become wealthy, basically. Uh, we just have to become, we have to become wealthy and we have to stay wealthy. There's a difference between getting wealthy and staying wealthy. But to get wealthy, the best way is your own business. Um, if you have your own business, that's the best way. And your business must be adding value. There must be some place you can add value. Anything that you're doing, see where you can add value. And that's the best way to get wealthy. The richest people, even if you take the richest man in Nigeria, Dan Gote, he adds value. He has a business. He produces something. So we must also be producing something. That's the best way to get in wealthy. And then when you get wealthy, you now need to invest your money wisely. Invest it wisely. Because of the inflation, one of the best places to invest your money wisely are properties. For those people that have property. But property in good location, no. Uh -huh. Property in good location. But even if it is not in good location, even in my village in your state, the price of land is going up all the time. So even in villages, prices of land is going up. But it's better if it is in a good location. If you don't have enough money, gather up money with some other people and buy a plot of land. Uh, those people that do a job, they should do a job together and buy land. The next best is foreign exchange because foreign exchange is very stable. There are a lot of asset management companies you can go to and you can use, buy small, small dollar and invest in their fund. Just invest in their fund. Uh, $1,000, $2,000, you can invest small, 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 small like that. Um, other, we, other places you can invest your money wisely, commodities, gold, and then what we call alternatives like artwork. Um, even small artwork, big artwork, you'll be surprised how they maintain value. Uh, if you know Bruce Onopa Akbeya, for example, my favorite uh, artist, his work is, uh, I've always been collecting some of his work. They're now worth a lot more. Uh, so those are some of the things. But getting wealthy is different from staying wealthy. Once you get wealthy, the problem with a lot of people that are retired is that during their life, when they were active, they were very wealthy. They were getting wealth. But unfortunately, they, they didn't stay wealthy. They didn't stay wealthy because they invested in the wrong instrument. If you just put your money in, uh, in, uh, in the bank, unfortunately, really, it's, that money is being eroded. Why? Because the best interest rate, treasury bills will give you 20, maybe 21% interest rate. But inflation is 33%. 
So at the end of the year, your 100 naira is worth 120 naira, but you cannot buy 133 naira worth. So putting money in, uh, in fixed deposit or treasury bills may not necessarily make you stay wealthy. So you have to think about other things. And it also requires, staying wealthy also requires frugality. You have to be very frugal, unfortunately. When you are still very active, don't be buying cars and uh, buying, going, doing all sorts of things all the time. Just manage with what you have. Je, 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 je. Don't just be, uh, hey, don't just be spending money, going to bar uh, all the time, drinking pepper soup and beer all the time. If you used to go out, if you used to go out uh, three times in a week, reduce it to one time in a week or even one time in a month and just be saving very, very much um, so that you can become what we call financially independent. Uh -huh. And then one day you become financially free. So I said, lastly, make sure that uh, money, I said money is a fiction. No, money is a fiction. You think it has value, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have value. But we have all chosen to believe that money has value, but it really doesn't have value. Or that there are other better things that you can keep. You know, they say money, money is supposed to perform three functions. Uh, and one of them is supposed to be store of value. But that store of value in Nigeria doesn't really work at all. Lastly, my last slide. I have overshoot my... <laughs> The last slide is, let's believe in Nigeria. Uh, if we cannot produce made in Nigerian products, let us buy made in Nigeria products. When you go to the market, when you go to the supermarket, and you see one product made abroad and one product made in Nigeria, buy made in Nigeria products. Because that way, you're helping the output the economy to grow, which would somehow come back to you as well. So make buy made in Nigeria products and better still you be part of the journey of making things in Nigeria. Let's be proudly Nigeria. Let's believe in our country. We don't have two countries. We have only only one. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. We are now at the second part, which will give us room to...